Hey, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Welcome to Trial and Error, where I play the first part of a game or a game demo, usually do that pretty badly, and give you my thoughts along the way. This time I'm looking at Rage 2, which I have been on and off excited about and curious about. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what to think of this game. Um, I really like Far Cry as a series, and this looks like a, maybe a mashup of Far Cry and kind of the fast-paced arcadey gunplay of Doom. Um, I, I don't know exactly what it'll feel like, but I love open-world games. And among open world games, I also really liked Mad Max. Avalanche and id partnered up to make this game, and Avalanche made the Mad Max game, which I really, really enjoyed the vehicle combat in that. And I'm kind of hoping that that same craftsmanship will be brought over to the vehicle combat in this game. I don't play games for story, I just like big, interesting open worlds to be immersed in and just find things to do all over the place. I don't like difficult games, so I'm hoping that there will be some difficulty options that will uh, cater to my lack of skill. Despite how much I think I could really enjoy this game, I'm also not finished with Far Cry New Dawn, which is uh, also an open world first person shooter in a colorful post-apocalyptia. Granted, the game plays pretty different. I don't think I'm going to get near as many opportunities, if any at all, to snipe carefully from a distance in this game. Which is one of the things I love to do in Ghost Recon Wildlands and Far Cry, those types of games, and so I'm wondering if I'll really miss having that in Rage 2, or if I'll be able to adjust to the frenetic style of gunplay. Alright, enough blabbing for now, here we go! Oh, good. Easy, definitely. Yeah, already the movement feels like really smooth, very Doom-like, which... My preference is a little bit more of that bouncy Far Cry feel. So I feel a little bit more like I'm, I'm in the environment, I'm walking around, rather than, like, sliding around. Let's see, can I die? What happens if I do this? Yay! Alright, that was pretty nice reload. Maybe I'm right next to a spawn point. Okay, so it looks like health maybe doesn't regenerate, but you pick up. You get pickups from fallen enemies to regenerate your health. Which encourages you to push forward rather than hide to regenerate your health. Okay, but there are health packs. That's good. Mom really tried to keep you out of that armor as long as she could. Wonder why. Getting jealous, Lily? Damn right I am. I would have been the youngest ranger to ever get sworn in, if not for this bullshit nanotrite crap. Yeah, the story so far, the characters are very, like, way too casual and cool about the horrific world that they live in, which is definitely not my preference. I tend to like some psychological realism, but this is why I typically don't play games for story. Kill enemies in succession to charge overdrive, which increases the damage you deal. When fully charged, you can activate overdrive by pressing, pressing L1 and R1, and it also restores your health. So, yeah, the mechanics are definitely pushing you to go, 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 kill, 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 not hide, crouch, play it safe, and wait. I don't know, we'll see if I adapt. Oh, here we go. I got over here. I wish the uh, aim assist worked just a little bit better for me. Oh well. I also wish I didn't have to push a button to pick up, like, ammo and stuff. Oh boy. Oh hey! Oh! There's somebody up there? There sure is. Let's try some melee. There we go. Oh dang, yeah. That definitely felt like doom. Okay, so we have these arcs that can be found all over the wasteland that upgrade your weapons and abilities. My name is Ranger Walker. <laughs> I wonder what uh, state of the U.S. we could potentially be in. <laughs> okay, so you also can earn and unlock vehicles by completing locations and activities in the wasteland. Cool. Whoa! Oh! Oh, nice. Good luck out there. Oh, boy.
Oh! Oops. Oh! Oh. Oh man, I'm not good at aiming. Oh my gosh. Oh hey, where'd you come from? Oh man. Oh! Okay, so you got sentry towers, you got outposts to take down. Storage containers, zero out of three. Well, there's supposed to be three storage containers here, but I'm not seeing them. Can you give me a hint? What is that? Oh, jeez, it's alive! Alright, so that's one. Jeez Louise, I've been here for like five minutes or so, and I can't find... I only found one of the storage... one of the three storage containers. Alright, well, let's try a different location. Alright. Oh, health infusion. Let's try that. Did I do it? Oh, hey. Oh, I'm in trouble! Man, have trouble hitting these guys. I guess I should just run up and melee them. It's not as fun, though. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Yeah, that, uh, I really wish that, uh, aim assist was a little better for me. Hey. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure for a lot of other gamers that's not a problem, but I'm just not very good at uh, aiming. And so I really miss not having a, a more generous aim assist. I also feel like when I'm supposed to be able to break these crates, like, I should be able to, this close, I should be able to smash it. <laughs> Oh, come on! <laughs> Two more storage containers. It's interesting, the the gameplay, as far as the combat is concerned, really encourages this fast-paced, you'll go, 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 go. And then these storage containers that they have at locations are hidden just well enough that it's a very different type of gameplay when you're looking for them. It's almost not quite to the point of environmental puzzle, but they are tucked away that... Uh, compared to, like, Far Cry New Dawn's collectibles at a location, I'm, uh... It's taken me much more time to find them. And some I even just give up on. Oh, you got armor on you or something, right? Oh, do this! Oh, look out! Use... Oh, health infusion. I was trying to use my special... Okay, I'm dead. Okay, let's try this. Pop! Okay. Hey, Gonna Far Cry it a little bit here. Except Far Cry has better aim assist. <laughs> Are you behind me? Where'd you come from? I guess I could have been using overdrive during that at some point. I'm just not a fast thinker. You know, when I get in the thick of it, I kind of just uh, stick to one approach. And so a game like this that probably requires a lot of fast thinking just might not be for me. The menus are, the menu tabs are a little slow to respond. Click. Come on. <laughs> I end up, it doesn't respond sometimes for a second, causing me to hit the L1 or R1 button again, and then it catches up and takes me further than I want to go. <laughs> oh man, so navigating these menus is not fun. Same with, same with the down tabs, like, down, down. There's just, just a, it's just a little bit sluggish, you know? Wait, health regeneration from picking up Feltrite is increased by 20%. I want something that just statically reduces damage, period. What do you got for that? Is there no damage reduction from bullets? Whoa! Whoa! Oh, hey! Oh my gosh! I cannot aim! 
They're using it to make nuts. Okay, skip. Great, man. This I'm only a few hours in. I'm already impatient with the dialogue and skipping it. Oh, here we go. Bullet protection at nominal level. Damage from bullets is reduced by 10. Okay, this is what I want. Come on, I'm right there! Ugh. Oh, come on! I'm on top of it! <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> oh my gosh. There! Oh my gosh. Oh, hey. Oh, missed. There we go. Well, that definitely suits my crappy aim. Ew. I like it. <laughs> oh, so there's like components, not just... For a second I thought there was just ammo in those supply crates, but... There's components, there's junk which you can turn into money. So that does make breaking those more satisfying, knowing that. Oh, hey! What are you? Oh, you're special! Oh, dang! Nee! Oh, and I have overdrive built up. I should use that. Keep forgetting. Oh, dang! Oh, dang! She didn't make it. She was killed in the attack. I'm sorry to hear. That explains why you're here, I guess. You're filling in for Prowley. Whatever it takes to crush the authority. Amen. The characters just seem all disconnected emotionally, you know. Um, it's just like a, uh, you know, obviously a mature story with, with darkness to it, but with the psychological complexity of a Saturday morning cartoon and the emotional depth of the same. Okay, so I just unlocked the skill tree that has to do with combat and... While there are some things that will help me prevent a little bit of damage to myself, there's nothing that really is going to compensate for my lack of skill in, in manipulating the, the reticle while I'm trying to lock on the targets. My aim is just crappy with this thing. And for me, aim assist is something that I've come to count on if I'm going to end up enjoying a first-person shooter. And it's a pretty light aim assist with no option that I can see to make it a, a more heavy aim assist. And I think that's really holding me back from appreciating a lot of the, the combat. Again, I, you know, it's very, of course, particular to me, but that's the reality for me in this game. Now, a way I could compensate for that is go more full-on with a shotgun approach. And again, that is counter to the style I play with in other first-person and third-person shooters, which tends to be more about sniping or shooting from far away. But maybe I'll try that for a little while and see how the a more close-up shotgun-slash-melee approach feels to me. Nice. It's been too long since I played host to one Ooh. of your kind. Jeez. This creature design, you know, is really disturbing and, and I I sometimes wonder if there's a negative effect that creature designs like this have on us. Because it clearly is not like completely just this alien or monster or something like that. It looks like uh, in some ways, an exaggerated version of some deformities that we see in humans that have different conditions that might cause an enlarging uh, of, their, of their skull um, or some deformity in their mouth. And I wonder if tapping into that real-world reality and kind of exaggerating it, whether doing it intentionally or not, in some way perpetuates in us psychologically a discomfort um, around those in the real world who have certain uh, deformities. I think of the game Resident Evil, like the last Resident Evil game that came out and how they used an old woman in a wheelchair to be a, a scary, disturbing kind of device. And I do kind of wonder if if it's the, you know, is it the chicken or the egg thing? I think that when we see people that are really old and infirm um, or disabled in some way that significantly changes the way that they look, if that is disturbing to us because on some level it reminds us of uh, mortality and weakness and 
what we could potentially be faced with someday in some form. But then I also wonder if those feelings and potential distance we might put between ourselves and those who are uh, infirm or deformed in some way, if that's perpetuated or enhanced as we expose ourselves to content that takes inspiration from that and purposefully uses it to create unsettling moments in fiction. I haven't done any research on that, but it is something that I think about now and then when I see certain designs um, that are taking inspiration from real world that are meant to disturb or unsettle us in some way. And if so, if, if there is some truth to that, then I think that's something to be on guard about. I honestly think far more than exposing ourselves to, uh, you know, crazy violence and stuff like that. If there's something in fiction that would make us more uncomfortable to be around those who are disabled, that's something I would want to avoid. So I'd be curious to learn if there's any kind of research or data on, on that kind of thing. Because as believers, we want to be available. Uh, to love and serve those who are elderly or who have disabilities of some kind. We don't want to be intimidated or weirded out or whatever by that kind of interaction. Oh! Oh! Oh my gosh! Guns blazing strategy is freaking me out. I don't think it's working for me. Yeah, that's just... Uh... It's just not my style of gameplay. Too fast, too furious. Well, furious is fine. Too fast. Yeah, I like a more deliberate style where I've got a situation with enemies in front of me and the question occurs to me, okay, how should I go about handling this situation? And with my, I guess my temperament or my skill level or whatever it is, I just feel like I don't get to ask that question. I, the answer always has to be run in there and just mash, mash, mash the trigger. Don't know how to play this kind of game. Oh, I should use overdrive. Yeah, not my type of gameplay. I just don't like that ha pushing forward into the chaos and feeling like I'm always at the edge of death unless I fully commit to pushing forward. Which doesn't necessarily mean I won't die. I just don't... <laughs> I don't like it. I can see why other people would love this kind of game. It's... it's a doomy kind of game, you know? I just wanted it to be more like Far Cry. Oh, that's big. My gosh! Jeez Louise! Oh, jeez. I don't think I should get hit by that. Oh, my lanta. Oh, don't get hit by that. How do I run? How do I... I can't remember my controls. God. Finally. Okay, successful, but just still way outside my comfort zone. <laughs> okay, so there's an upgrade to help you find storage containers that you can get pretty early on, so... That potentially solves that problem and makes that Far Cry style box checking um, easier and probably more enjoyable. For me anyway. Oh, I'm out of ammo! Oh, whoops, wrong button. Where's the, um... How do I access my weapon wheel again? Oh, crap! Oh, man, I'm having troubles! Gosh, anything with a rate, anything with like racing, like timed missions, um, anything where I have to be faster than a time limit or faster than other AI things, I'm just not good at. Oops. 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 I think that turn got me last time. Oh! Didn't work for me. Oh. That didn't work? I didn't make a name for myself? Do I have to do this again? Do I have to win? I don't understand. Uh, no. Is this like a required quest? Can I exit this quest? Uh, quit race. There we go. Gosh, I hope that's not like a required story mission. From what I, from what I can tell, I have to either win that race or place third in order to check off that objective. I'm hoping that I... that's not a mandatory objective. I'm gonna try one of these other ones and of this character. Because there's different characters on, in the open world that 
doing their missions, or at least starting doing their missions, uh, or doing an initial mission with them, uh, unlocks the the tier of skills that they can upgrade for you. But before I can even start getting access to the tier upgrades that this character offers, I have to do this initial set of tasks for her. One is make a name for yourself in this racing thing, the other is make a name for yourself in this arena fighting thing. I'm hoping I don't have to do both, because the race thing, I think I have to place, like, first or third, maybe, or something. Uh, I don't know the patience or skill for that. See, I'm mostly just melee killing these guys. Yeah, I also don't like being forced to fight enemies in, like, a confined environment, you know? I think that's just the Far Cry player in me. I want to have an, an environment, an open environment, that I can use strategically to my advantage. But that's not what this game is. I'm also not good at, like, remembering all the different powers that are available to me. And so in the thick of combat, when you're asking me to think fast, I'm gonna tend to just do a basic attack and just hammer on that. Can't keep track of all my options. Finally. Whew, you aren't kidding. You really kicked the shit out of those muties. Good job. That kind of quality slaughtering can make you a star. I still gotta get behind the wheel of Chaz Car Derby, though. Uh, I know it's a hassle. Yes. Hey, Wellspring thanks you for jumping through all these hoops. No skin off my back. It's a lot of skin off my back. You won't regret this. I totally will. I will regret having to spend any more time with this game. I haven't played it for a complete five hours like I usually try to do. It's been about four and a half, but I'm done. I mean, yeah, I could go back and probably make get through that race. Maybe after a few more failures, I'd eventually get it. But I'm not motivated to get through that race to open up that upgrade tier because the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is not for me, and I think that's probably the big selling point for this game. If you're not into that fast-paced, Doom-style gunplay, then you're probably not going to enjoy this game, and I am not. I can see why other people would, but it's just not the game for me. It's got some of those cool Far Cry open-world elements that if I enjoyed the gunplay even a little bit more, I think I would possibly get sucked into all the different collectathon things I could do across the map of Rage 2. I also am missing what I thought would be kind of like some emergent uh, random convoys or car battles that I would run into, considering that Avalanche made the Mad Max game that had such great vehicle combat, it doesn't seem like they're leaning on that experience very much in this game to provide uh, car combat in the open world unless you really are going to seek it out. And that's a bummer as well. I think that I wanted from Avalanche more Mad Max, and I wanted from uh, the rest of the game a little bit more of a Far Cry vibe. And while it does have some of those classic open world elements, I really think the game feels a lot more like a Doom type shooter. Anyway, I don't need to blah 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 and poop on this game, I'm just not the audience for it. So uh, hopefully uh, something in what I've said helps you figure out if you're the audience for Rage 2. That's all I have to say for now. Uh, I hope you'll join us over at ChristianGeekCentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. I'm not